The Crow and the Pitcher Based on Aesop's Fables A thirsty crow found a pitcher with some water in it, but so little was there that, try as she might, she could not reach it with her beak, and it seemed as though she would die of thirst within sight of the remedy. At last, she hit upon a clever plan. She began dropping pebbles into the pitcher, and with each pebble the water rose a little higher, until at last it reached the brim, and the knowing bird was enabled to quench her thirst. Necessity is the mother of invention. The Mercury and the Woodman Based on Aesop's fables, a woodman was cutting a tree by a river when his axe fell into the water. Mercury appeared and, feeling sorry for him, dived into the river. He first brought up a golden axe, but the woodman said it wasn't his. Then Mercury brought up a silver axe, which also wasn't the woodman's. Finally, he found the woodman's own axe. Pleased with his honesty, Mercury gave him all three axes. Another man, envious, tried to deceive Mercury but lost his axe instead. The story teaches that honesty is the best policy. A ba honesty is rewarded. The story highlights that being honest, even in difficult situations, can lead to unexpected rewards and positive outcomes, while dishonesty can result in loss and disappointment. The Wolf and the Lamb, based on Aesop's Fables A wolf found a lamb lost from its flock. Seeking an excuse to eat the lamb, the wolf accused it of past wrongs. You insulted me last year, the wolf claimed. I wasn't born then, said the lamb. You eat my grass, accused the wolf. I've only had milk, replied the lamb. You drink from my spring, the wolf insisted. I've only had my mother's milk, the lamb responded. Frustrated, the wolf said, Well, I'm not missing my dinner, and ate the lamb. This story shows how the strong can unfairly harm the weak. The wolf makes false excuses to eat the lamb, showing the abuse of power and the danger of unfair blame. It reminds us to be fair and kind, not using our strength to hurt others. The Ass and the Lapdog, based on Aesop's fables. A man owned an ass and a lapdog. The ass lived in the stable, well fed with oats and hay, but worked hard carting and grinding corn. The lapdog, a beloved pet, enjoyed a life of ease, often lying in his master's lap and receiving treats. The ass grew jealous of the lapdog's easy life. One day, he broke free and entered the house, mimicking the lapdog's playful antics. He caused chaos, upsetting the table and breaking dishes. Trying to jump into his master's lap, the ass frightened everyone. The servants drove the ass back to the stable, beating him for his foolishness. The ass lamented, Why couldn't I be content with my role instead of imitating the lapdog's silly behavior? Be content with your position and avoid envy. A slave ran away from his cruel master and hid in a desert cave, which turned out to be a lion's den. When the lion returned, the slave expected to be killed. Instead, the lion, in pain, showed the slave a swollen paw with a thorn in it. The slave removed the thorn, and the lion, grateful, befriended him. They lived together until the slave longed for human company and returned to town, where he was captured and sentenced to be thrown to the beasts. In the arena, a lion recognized the slave and affectionately lay at his feet. The amazed spectators demanded mercy, and both slave and lion were granted their freedom. Hansel and Gretel, children of a poor woodcutter, overhear their stepmother plotting to abandon them in the forest due to lack of food. At night, Hansel collects white pebbles to mark their way back home. The next day, their parents leave them in the forest, but Hansel and Gretel follow the pebbles back. The stepmother tries again, and this time Hansel uses breadcrumbs, but birds eat them. Lost, they find a candy house. The wicked witch inside captures Hansel and forces Gretel to serve her. The witch plans to eat Hansel, but is tricked by Gretel, who pushes her into an oven. Hansel and Gretel find the witch's treasure and return home to their joyful father. With their stepmother gone, they live happily ever after, never hungry again. This story is a well-known fairy tale from the Brothers Grimm, highlighting themes of resourcefulness, bravery, and the bond between siblings. The Dog, the Cock, and the Fox, based on Aesop's fables. A dog and a cock became great friends and agreed to travel together. 
At nightfall, the cock flew up into the branches of a tree to roost, while the dog curled himself up inside the trunk, which was hollow. At break of day, the cock woke up and crew as usual. A fox heard, and, wishing to make a breakfast of him, came and stood under the tree and begged him to come down. I should so like, said he, to make the acquaintance of one who has such a beautiful voice. The cock replied, Would you just wake my porter who sleeps at the foot of the tree? He'll open the door and let you in. The fox accordingly rapped on the trunk, when out rushed the dog and tore him in pieces. Moral, wits and teamwork can outsmart deception. The Blind Man and the Cub Based on Aesop's fables, there was once a blind man who had so fine a sense of touch that, when any animal was put into his hands, he could tell what it was merely by the feel of it. One day the cub of a wolf was put into his hands, and he was asked what it was. He felt it for some time and then said, Indeed, I am not sure whether it is a wolf's cub or a fox's, but this I know, it would never do to trust it in a sheepfold. Evil tendencies are early shown. The Bee and Jupiter Based on Aesop's fables A queen bee from Hymettus flew up to Olympus with some fresh honey from the hive as a present to Jupiter, who was so pleased with the gift that he promised to give her anything she liked to ask for. She said she would be very grateful if he would give stings to the bees, to kill people who robbed them of their honey. Jupiter was greatly displeased with this request, for he loved mankind, but he had given his word, so he said that stings they should have. The stings he gave them, however, were of such a kind that whenever a bee stings a man, the sting is left in the wound and the bee dies. Evil wishes, like fowls, come home to roost. The Ass, the Fox, and the Lion, based on Aesop's fables. An ass and a fox went into partnership and sallied out to forage for food together. They hadn't gone far before they saw a lion coming their way, at which they were both dreadfully frightened. But the fox thought he saw a way of saving his own skin, and went boldly up to the lion and whispered in his ear, I'll manage that you shall get hold of the ass without the trouble of stalking him, if you'll promise to let me go free. The lion agreed to this and the fox then rejoined his companion, and contrived before long to lead him by a hidden pit, which some hunter had dug as a trap for wild animals, and into which he fell. When the lion saw that the ass was safely caught and couldn't get away, it was to the fox that he first turned his attention, and he soon finished him off, and then at his leisure proceeded to feast upon the ass. Betray a friend, and you'll often find you have ruined yourself, the Fox and the Stork, based on Aesop's fables. A fox invited a stork to dinner, at which the only fare provided was a large flat dish of soup. The fox lapped it up with great relish, but the stork with her long bill tried in vain to partake of the savory broth. Her evident distress caused the sly fox much amusement. But not long after, the stork invited him in turn and set before him a pitcher with a long and narrow neck into which she could get her bill with ease. Thus, while she enjoyed her dinner, the fox sat by hungry and helpless, for it was impossible for him to reach the tempting contents of the vessel. Treat others as you wish to be treated, under the, the flea and the man. Based on Aesop's fables, a flea bit a man and bit him again and again, till he could stand it no longer, but made a thorough search for it, and at last succeeded in catching it. Holding it between his finger and thumb, he said, or rather shouted, so angry was he. Who are you, pray, you wretched little creature, that you make so free with my person? The flea, terrified, whimpered in a weak little voice, Oh, sir! Pray let me go. Don't kill me. I am such a little thing that I can't do you much harm. But the man laughed and said, I am going to kill you now, at once. Whatever is bad has got to be destroyed, no matter how slight the harm it does. Do not waste your pity on a scamp. Anders, the fir tree and the bramble. Based on Aesop's fables, a fir tree was boasting to a bramble and said somewhat contemptuously, you poor creature, you are of no use whatever. Now look at me. I am useful for all sorts of things, particularly when men build houses. They can't do without me then. 
But the bramble replied, Ah, that's all very well, but you wait till they come with axes and saws to cut you down, and then you'll wish you were a bramble and not a fir. Better poverty without a care than wealth with its many obligations.